For as long as I can remember, my family home has been a conundrum. A never-ending maze of impossible coincidences, unexplained phenomena, and strange occurrences. It got so weird that even local skeptics started believing something was off. I used to think it was haunted. But then things started to unravel in a way I couldn't ignore. Let's begin with the most benign glitch. Objects would randomly disappear. My keys, for example, vanished from the kitchen counter only to reappear inside the fridge. Then there was the journal I kept as a teenager. It disappeared for months, reappearing one day in a dusty corner of the attic, its pages filled with words I didn't recognize. And then, more unnerving things started to happen. Once, while walking down the hallway, I experienced an overpowering deja vu. I was engulfed by an emotion I couldn't quite put my finger on, like nostalgia, but more intense. It felt as if I would lived that moment a thousand times before. I brushed it off until one night I had what I could only describe as a near-death experience, NDE. I was suddenly enveloped in light and warmth, as if drifting into another realm. I felt an overwhelming sense of unity, like I was connected to everyone and everything. And then, just as suddenly, I snapped back into my body, lying on my bed. Perhaps most bewildering were the visions I had. I hesitate to call them visions because they felt so real. But what else could they be? Faces of people I didn't recognize appeared in my dreams, accompanied by feelings of love or intense familiarity. And then I'd meet these people, weeks or even months later, as if fate itself had arranged our encounter. I started researching these events, diving into ancient texts, modern science, and arcane philosophy. And let me tell you, the rabbit hole is deep. My search led me to Gödel's incompleteness theorems, mathematical equations suggesting that some truths can't be proven within a given system. It felt like an echo reverberating through my mind. Could it be that our understanding of reality is forever limited? Always eluding complete comprehension? And then there were the unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs. We lived near an Air Force base. And growing up, I often saw strange lights in the sky. But what stood out wasn't just their bizarre flight patterns. It was the timing. They appeared when something significant happened in my life, almost like cosmic milestones marking my journey. It was around this time that I met Sarah, a psychologist with an interest in Eastern philosophy. She introduced me to the concept of non-dualism, the idea that all of existence is interconnected, emanating from a single source, much like ripples in a pond. It struck a chord with me. Could it be that all these glitches were simply reminders of this profound unity? Sarah and I began to document our experiences in what we jokingly referred to as the Big Book of Glitches. Over time, the tome grew thick with accounts not just from us, but also from friends and strangers who had been lured by the inexplicable magnetism of our home. Even the concept of death took on a new meaning. My grandmother passed away, but her presence never left the house. Sometimes I'd smell her perfume, or a cold draft would sweep through a room she loved, bringing with it the subtle vibration of her laughter. Was this memory wipe, as Sarah put it, a part of this cosmic software? Did experiences carry over from one life to another? As years rolled by, I began to see the glitches less as anomalies and more as features, intricately woven into the fabric of our lives. They were like Easter eggs, hidden layers of reality, waiting for us to discover. Was our collective understanding of reality evolving, getting us closer to the source code? Or were we simply participants in a cosmic game with rules far beyond our understanding? Sarah and I soon realized we weren't alone in our quest. Online communities sprung up, forums buzzing with tales as wild and bewildering as our own. We found camaraderie in this digital landscape, a tribe of fellow explorers seeking to map out the unknown. 
we coined it the age of open source spirituality, a decentralized, user driven approach to understanding our reality. It was exhilarating, but also terrifying. The more we delved into these glitches, the more we sensed the shadowy contours of an intelligence, something or someone that seemed to be guiding us, or maybe manipulating our actions. Were these the architects of the simulation, overseeing their grand experiment? The strangest part was the sensation that the glitches were starting to respond to our thoughts, as if the code was becoming self-aware or adapting to our inquiries. Simple patterns emerged, and then more complex ones. It was like cracking the security of an impossibly sophisticated software, each revelation pulling us deeper into its labyrinthine logic. Finally, we couldn't resist the impulse to try something audacious. Gathering a circle of our closest confidants, we decided to attempt a collective action. Something so focused and intentional that it would either confirm our theories or expose them as the ramblings of overactive imaginations. We chose a date, synchronized our watches, and at the exact appointed time, we all concentrated on a singular, almost absurdly specific thought that a blue rose would manifest in the center of our living room. This was our ultimate cheat code, a command designed to interrogate the very foundations of our reality. As the seconds ticked by, the room grew thick with anticipation. Each of us submerged in a sea of focused mental energy. And then, just as we were about to surrender to disillusionment, it happened. A soft pop, a brief flicker of light, and there it was. A blue rose, impossibly vivid, standing tall in a vase that had been empty moments before. In that instant, Everything we theorized, everything we dared to believe, snapped into focus. We were not just spectators, we were participants in the most intricate, mind-bending game ever conceived. The Blue Rose became our totem, a symbol of possibilities beyond imagination. We continued our research now with a new sense of purpose and urgency. Because if a collective thought could manifest a Blue Rose, what else was possible? Could we rewrite the glitches, recode the simulation, heal the fractures in our world? The implications were staggering and not a little frightening, but we were committed to diving deeper, no matter where this rabbit hole would lead us. Because now we knew the only limit was our own belief in what's possible. And the game of reality had just become a lot more interesting. Hello everyone, I'm Giggles, and thank you so much for listening to my narration. A quick shout out to all my patrons, Melissa Perez, Geek Sanctuary, Lawrence Wallen, Andrea Sanderson London, Eric Safuentes, Krzysztof Kozak Slazak, Jesse Hartley, and Icy Narrates. If you want to become a patron today, you can check out the link in my description below. And as always, thank you so much for your support. I'll see you in the next video.